This is how you maintain your hard-earned muscle every time you enter a weight loss period. It's continuously how I'm able to look like this every time I step on stage in natural bodybuilding. Stick around to find out because your physique literally depends on it. How can I create a caloric deficit without losing muscle mass? The exact reason why you clicked on this video. So great question. First and foremost, if you aren't aware, a caloric deficit just simply means burning more calories than you consume or consuming less calories than you burn. A maintenance means consuming or burning equal to the amount of calories in order to maintain your current body weight. And a caloric surplus is the opposite of a caloric deficit, whereby you're consuming more calories than you're burning or burning less calories than you're consuming. Therefore, you're gaining weight. The majority of people are maintaining or in a caloric surplus. In order to have an effective caloric deficit, you need to slowly taper off the amount of food you're currently consuming, slowly entering that caloric deficit because I'm sure you're aware, you cannot lose weight, you cannot lose fat if you are not in a caloric deficit. The most effective calories in order to maintain your current muscle mass is from 300 to 700 calories in a caloric deficit, dependent on your starting point and also dependent on the urgency of your goal. So let's say for example, I have a wedding in eight months and I want to lose 10 kilograms. You are in a perfect position in order to slowly taper off from your current calories entering your caloric deficit, usually giving yourself seven to 14 days to make that transition. It's realistic and you're giving yourself the best possible chance in order to maintain as much muscle mass as possible. Compared to, you have a wedding in three months needing to lose 10 kilograms. The urgency of this situation requires you to have a more strict approach when it comes to the tapering and when it comes to your caloric deficit. Therefore, giving you a less likely chance to maintain as much muscle mass as possible. Now, I'm not saying you're not gonna have any muscle left, you're just going to be burning some more muscle in the process in comparison to taking this slower approach. The slower approach, again, it doesn't mean that you're not seeing results. It just means that you're burning your fat, losing weight, while giving yourself and giving your body the best chance to maintain your muscle mass. As I mentioned, the tapering process, ideally in a perfect world, should take seven to 14 days in order to enter that caloric deficit. Thus, the approach of calculating your average caloric consumption over the course of one week is the recommendation because you need to know how many calories you're currently consuming from your maintenance calories. You can do this in one of two ways, going online for free, searching TDEE, entering your data into that calculator and getting your current calories for your height, your weight and your activity level. Or you, there's another approach where you can just enter your data into an app like MyFitnessPal, which is again, completely free, calculating your average food consumption over the course of one week, then seeing how far away from your maintenance calories you are. The low effort and less brain work approach is literally just eating less food over the course of the seven days to 14 days continuously from day to day. However, in saying that, at some point you do have to know the basics of how many calories you're consuming at least over the course of one whole day to know what your current caloric deficit truly is. Because if you're too far into a caloric deficit, then of course you can see you're not going to be maintaining as much muscle mass as you would love to maintain. I hope I was able to explain as in depth as possible how to maintain your muscle mass while effectively entering a caloric deficit. How much protein should I consume to maintain my muscle during fat loss? It really depends on how many years you've been consistently training at the gym. If you're a beginner to novice, having trained between zero months and 24 months, then 
consume between 0.8 to 1 gram of protein per pound of body weight. If you're an intermediate, advanced, or athlete, then consume 1 to 1.2 grams of protein per pound of body weight. If you're competing on stage in natural bodybuilding, then stick between 1 and 1.3 grams of protein per pound of body weight. The amount of protein specifically depends on how far into your shred and how far into your caloric deficit you currently are. So for example, if you're currently only one week to like six weeks into your caloric deficit, then you're safer on the lower range of that. The longer you're in a dieting period, the more protein your body's going to require in order to maintain your muscle mass, or at least give your body the best chance in order to maintain your muscle mass. Hence why I've given you a protein range. So dependent on your training age, make sure that you're making the slow and gradual changes from I would say every fortnight. However, I wouldn't necessarily immediately jump from 0.8 to 0.9 to one if I was a beginner. I would instead just look at the amount of protein within this range. Let's say my range of protein after doing the conversion is 140 to 190 grams of protein. From fortnight to fortnight, I would instead just increase the protein from 140 to 150 to 160, etc., etc. Because the jump from 0.8 to 0.9 is, I would say, a bit too dramatic from the requirements of protein that you actually require in order to maintain your muscle mass. However, the long story short is just slowly and gradually increase the amount of protein you're consuming as you progress in a dieting period. What are the best types of exercises or exercise recommendations I need to be doing to maintain my muscle during fat loss? Whatever it was that you were doing prior to entering this dieting period is exactly what you must be doing in this dieting period. The same workout plan, workout structure, the same training times, same intensity, same progressive overload principles, everything. Nothing changes when it comes to your training. If you weren't weightlifting whatsoever, then I don't see how you have any muscle to unmask, thus, just maintain whatever cardiovascular endurance you were doing before, but we are assuming that you're shredding to maintain some sort of muscle that you've developed through the process of weightlifting. Therefore, I would recommend that you do your absolute best to maintain exactly what you were doing in the gym or outside of the gym, whatever weightlifting practice you were doing in your dieting phase, during that dieting period. It is literally a way for you to tell your body, muscle, hang on. It's going to be a rocky ride. I know I'm losing weight, but do not lose hope. I need you. I need the muscle because I'm still lifting the same workload. I'm still performing the same intensity as before. Thus, I still require the same amount of muscles. As you slowly lose hope, when it comes to performing the same intensity, the same exercises, the higher the likelihood that you're going to be losing some muscle mass. Look, it's inevitable that the longer you draw out your dieting period, you're going to be losing strength. There's nothing you can do about that. But you need to fight and do everything in your power to slow down the rate at which you lose strength in order to maintain the most amount of muscle mass as possible when you get to your final physique, your final form. Is cardio necessary for fat loss? And if so, how much of it should I be doing? In my opinion, cardio should be absolutely non-negotiable when it comes to entering any weight loss period. This is because it's the perfect tool for creating a further caloric deficit by the burning of calories without having to consume less calories or less food. Therefore, it not only becomes easier, but more sustainable for you in both the short and long term. 
Therefore, it is necessary and the best cardio for you to perform is slow, steady state cardio. In my opinion, the best recommendation is just going on the treadmill because you're able to maintain the same consistency and variables every single time you incorporate a cardio session. Of course, you can just go for a walk around the block, uh, like a hike or whatever, but the best cardio is slow steady state as mentioned, meaning just walking or jogging on the treadmill. Keep your hands on the heart rate sensor to be able to track your heart rate. Your heart rate should stick between 115 to no more than 160 beats per minute. If you're on the heavier side, then your heart rate's naturally gonna be higher. Let's say 115 to 170 beats per minute. The higher above the maximum heart rate recommendation you go, the higher the likelihood of you not being able to maintain your muscle mass in the process of that dieting period. What I tell the majority of my clients to do is go on the treadmill, stick between eight and 15 incline, and three and four speed. That is really as simple as that. The total duration of cardiovascular endurance really depends on how far you are in your caloric deficit, or how heavy your starting point is in your caloric deficit. Also, by the way, how much food you would like to continue consuming in your caloric deficit. There are so many variables there, therefore it's too broad to give you an accurate recommendation or requirement for the total amount of cardio you should be doing. But I would say, as a general rule of thumb, stick between one hour and three hours of cardio in total per week. Past that point, then I would say you're more in the territory of competitive bodybuilding for stage. Less than that, then you're not really giving yourself the best chance to burn more calories through the use or tool of cardio. Instead, you're burning it through eating less food, which isn't really sustainable as mentioned. That's gonna wrap up today's video. I really hope that you learned something that you can now take and implement the next time you enter a weight loss period. If you did learn something, please consider dropping me a like, subscribing to the channel and commenting below what you would like to see next. I'll see you beautiful people in the next video.